six. Got to change it up a bit. Six weeks into the learning at home, I've decided that it's time for me to start working out again. I was pretty active in high school and I played a little bit of soccer and basketball. But with all the gyms closed, I've really had to look for ways to get a little creative to get in shape. But I'm glad to report that I feel like it's working. I know what you're thinking. Where'd you go? Okay, it looks like we're ready to get started. How's it going, everyone? Glad you could join today. We're changing units up a little bit this week. I hope you're sticking, uh, keeping up with the class. Uh, of, I hope course. You guys, uh, of course. Yeah. Not. That's a nice cat, Maddie. Um, <laughs> I, uh, this week, we're going to start our argumentative essay unit. So I hope you've had a chance to look at the Monday memo. This week's Monday memo really focuses on the fact that we're ready to move forward and start a new unit. The first five weeks we were learning at home, we were focused on finishing projects that we had already started. And now we're ready to go. The ultimate goal with this unit is to write an argumentative essay. This is an essential standard. What I'm asking students to do is choose a prompt from a selection of prompts that I've posted into Schoology. Once you know that prompt, there's a form for you to fill out so that I know what you're going to be researching. Once you've submitted that, you have two research logs to submit on Wednesday and Friday. And in this, you will find several resources. Uh, did anybody have any questions about anything? Oh, I do. Um, how do we choose our topics? That's a good question. Um, what I've done, argumentative, argumentative essays need to be told from the, from the perspective of, of picking a claim, right? You're choosing a claim, you're taking a stance on a topic. What I've done is in Schoology, I've listed out, I think something like 25 different prompts that you can choose from, okay? So as long as you clearly choose a prompt and then within that prompt, you pick a side either for or against it, you can roll with that, with that topic. There's an assignment this week where all you have to do is tell me what prompt you picked. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I also have a question. Um, so in my research, I was wondering uh, how do I know what resources are, con are considered like good resources for my paper? Sure, you want, you want resources that are credible. You want resources that are timely and you want resources that are relevant to your topic, right? So when you're looking at a resource, try to find who wrote it. Try to find what organization wrote it. Now these are, a lot of the topics that you're choosing are, are divisive. They're, 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 there's gonna be some bias. So you wanna, re, you wanna know that you have an organization or an author that has some credibility, someone who's worth trusting in that topic, right? So, you know, picking a, a blog by, you know, some guy who lives in Montana in a shack somewhere might not always be the best uh, resource to use versus someone with, say, their doctorate who, who works for a university or something like that. Okay, cool. Thank okay. you. No problem. Thank you. Um, so following up to Erica's question, how many um, sources do you recommend for us to use? Well, for the assignment, we need four resources, okay? A lot of that is because of a couple things. One, I want you to find a resource that gives you a lot of good information, and I want you to find one or two that confirm that information, right? We need to show that this information is correct. The other thing that you're going to want to find is a resource that goes against your, your claim, right? Because we're going to be writing that counterclaim, that counterargument paragraph there at the end. And you want to know what people on the other side are saying too, so you can defend your, your stance on your topic. Does that make sense? Yes. Two different types of sources that students will find while doing research for this essay are primary sources and secondary sources. Uh, I have another question too. Sure. Why are primary sources important? Wait, what's that? You don't think that primary sources are that important? Uh, why don't you give the Diary of Anne Frank a call? Bring, bring. What's that? Oh, it won't take your call? That's because there's a museum named after it. Oh, primary sources are important. See, Alana read the memo. Right? <laughs> um, primary sources are important because they're the people who actually did the research. They're the people that actually experienced the, uh, the concept or the topic or the event that you're, that you're working with. Secondary resources are fine too. There's nothing wrong with them. But primary sources, because they're the people that actually experienced it or did it, they're considered more authoritative. Okay. Primary resources also provide some, some emotion, right? 
We've talked about rhetoric before with that ethos, pathos, logos concept. You want all three of those. You want that emotion in there as well. And those primary resources can help give that to you. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This must be an aerobics class, Tom worked out. I need a pencil sharpener, Tom said bluntly. I just dropped the toothpaste, Tom said crestfallenly. He is the most grammatically correct man in the world. I don't always communicate, but when I do, I'm grammatically correct. Words matter, my friends. Any other questions out there? You guys are asking some good ones. Hi, Maddie. Hi. Hi. Can you explain the assignment? I didn't get it. <sighs> she requested the meeting. A uh, quick question to go with that. What do we do if we can't find the author or the dates for our sources? A good question. Um, what you want to do is you want to really look at that resource, okay? One, you want to look to make sure it looks professional. You, you know, a lot of times professional resources will have an organization that published it that will give you some information on that, on that organization. The other thing that you can do is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, a lot of times they'll have a copyright. If it's, if it's a solid resource, it'll have a copyright, and that will tell you the publishing organization as well as the date. If there is no date, you can probably assume that the information is updated daily, which is, which is good too. Also, if there's information that you know is false, that you know is out of date, that's probably a, a, a good idea that that resource is not timely anymore, right? You find a resource that says the world is flat, you probably don't want to use it because we've proven that wrong. <laughs> okay. When developing your claim for your argumentative essay, it's really important that students choose an issue that has definitive sides. When everyone agrees, it can lead to some logical fallacies. That's a ridiculous statement. There is opposition to every topic, and I am often it. Oh, yeah, not really. There are plenty of topics out there that most people agree on, and arguing is not, there's just no point. False. I have no problem opposing any topic. Therefore, it is correct. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Next thing you're going to tell me that people would argue about something so trivial, like, like what kind of bear is best? Black bear is best because they live in America, which is the greatest country in the world. Okay, that's good. How about beets? If you don't like beets, then you hate farmers. Battlestar Galactica. No one's going to believe your opinion. Your face is stupid. Different resources will help your research in different ways. Secondary resources can oftentimes provide a lot of data, which will really help that logos part, that logic that you're trying to put into your argument. Primary resources can help in all three areas of rhetoric, ethos with credibility, logos with the data the author found, but also with the pathos, the emotion. This is because the author tends to have a lot of firsthand experience with the subject that you're talking about. You know, it's funny, this happened to me just the other day, back in February. I was walking down the street, and I'm sure this happens to you too. This young lady came up to me and said, Hey, I was wondering if you had any opinions on the controversy surrounded by the Capital Circuit Soccer League Championship of 2000. I said to her, I'm a primary resource. That's right. 